We've come to what will inevitably matter in climate discussions more than anything else. More than storm forcing, problems with models, and more than one year, three year, 20 or 85 year lags in the atmosphere and ocean. It's the rapid temperature forcing of the extremes of solar activity. Now on the lower end of the scale, we've already looked at the strength of the jets and the inflation of the large scale cells and how it diminishes quickly in sunspot minimum as clouds are increasing due to the cosmic ray nucleation. But now it's time for the other extreme and the immediate temperature forcing in the direction of heat. We go to one of the first papers on solar proton forcing in what I'll call the new climate era, the era of particle forcing, which began with Mathis et al. in 2017 when the particle forcing data set was released. Now this paper by two Harvard professors explored how bad things on Earth could become due to a super flare on the sun. And in the course of ultimately finding our planet to be at extreme risk over the long run, it confirmed that extreme solar events can create rapid heating events in the atmosphere. Now while studies on these short-term forcings due to solar protons are rare, two excellent cases indicate warming events that took weeks to bleed out of the lower atmosphere, after which it went into the oceans or upper atmospheric layers where it has the potential to lag later. And it makes the global warming we hear about on the news seem like small potatoes by comparison. Some studies have sought to tie these changes to UV forcing alone, the solar irradiance, implicating incredible depletions of the ozone. Now, while detections of such atmospheric chemistry do linger for weeks, the full accounting of the heating that is observed cannot come without solar wind particle precipitation. It was a move seen as bold and outside the norm at the time, not so much anymore with those particles officially allowed in the IPCC climate models. By the way, the zonal and vertical winds were also noted to have changed considerably in the 2003 event implying those particle forcings of the global electric circuit, the total atmospheric column, the Hadley and Walker cells, and the jets. Again, the new player in the game. Now it's important to know that the rapid heating from extreme events is very different than the heating or cooling you get with the 11-year sunspot cycle. This has different effects around the globe, with solar maximum usually bringing heat but still bringing cold to some areas, and while solar minimum usually brings cold, it does bring heat to some areas. And outside of those most extreme storms, the 11-year cycle forcing we're looking at is on the large-scale oscillations in the Atlantic and the Pacific, things like the AMO, PDO, El Nino, NAO. These also do cause localized regions to experience the opposite trends of what the rest of the world is seeing. We know that with those oscillations now. It's just a strengthening of them we get from the sun. An example of cold coming with solar maximum is found in southern China, where precipitation increases in late winter due to those large-scale forcings, including on the Asian monsoon and the jet stream, and they add snow and a bit of albedo forcing to the region to sprinkle some extra chill on their sunspot maximum winter's end. Of course, on the whole, the studies that exist do show the statistical correlation in most parts of the world as direct, heating with solar maximum, cooling with solar minimum. Although, how much of that can be attributed to those large-scale modulations and how much to direct particle forcing, especially in those extreme events, remains a mystery. Those hundreds of studies throughout the years have succeeded in presenting the correlation and getting published, but always fell short of both proving how ultraviolet light could account for this forcing and of making their way into the official climate models. Perhaps the former is the cause of the latter. Of course, now that they are allowed in the VIP, they're bringing a few friends with them. To be honest, I always thought the missing piece of the puzzle would be found by proving dual heating from the protons and electrons, and then it would be forced to come into the models. Right now, the ozone effect and the atmospheric chemistry are the reason they're there. They are the main course that they're going to take in this first experience they have with the IPCC, but... Now that they are allowed in the models, it is up to the scientists to use their new tools to adjust attribution modeling of those forcings. Again, they are allowed in the game, but are still somewhat handcuffed in the models, with the full ohmic dynamics and global electric circuit left unsure they'll get called onto the field at all this next round. Now as it is, this will still produce a measurable attribution change in the modeling, 
But the full realization of solar plasma climate forcing will not come until the full effect of solar protons, Van Allen electrons, and the excitations of the Earth's magnetic field and atmospheric electricity are fully understood. These Harvard professors tried to do two things on the heels of the official release of the solar particle data set. They wanted to draw attention to the potential cataclysm that will unfold when the sun shifts into that rare sixth gear again, but also they wanted to express the multi-degree, short-term particle forcing that is not only missing from the models, but if we recall from episode one of this series and from the full movie, they blame that forcing on humans because for all the extra input of energy and excitation of the Earth's existing energetic systems, the models show negative solar forcing in the irradiance data during the most extreme events. And as a reminder, that means that the real solar effect is not attributed properly. The real climate effects are blamed on human forcing. And since there is actually a tiny and false data drop registered, they actually tick the human forcing up a bit higher to account for it. These events heat the world, and it counts as human forcing plus whipped cream on top. Let's remember, the period of global warming in the second half of the 1900s saw twice the CMEs as the prior period and the last 20 years. This is a tremendous amount of solar forcing that is unaccounted for and blamed on humans. We are nearing the end of the atmospheric lag from the grand solar maximum of the entire Holocene. There is still oceanic lag to go, which will manifest as strong El Nino releases of that heat into the atmosphere, but also will help melt water in the North and South Atlantic to chill and desalinate the sea and begin the trend the other way. All series episodes are linked below along with the full movie. We update the sun, earth, and science news relating to this and important other topics 365 days a year, right here. I'll see you in the morning. Be safe, everyone.